Welcome back, folks, to JS Drops, hosted by This Dot Media. My name is Alex. I'm so stoked to be here today. And today we're going to talk about dependency injection debugging using some of the cool new features that have recently dropped in Angular DevTools. And so before we start that off, uh, let's do a quick recap of what does dependency injection look like, right? So let's say you want to watch cat videos on YouTube. Reasonable enough. I think we've all done this. Um, and to do this, you actually need something. You have a dependency on something. That thing being a smartphone. Where do you get the smartphone from? Well, this is you right here looking good. Or probably you're going to go to the Apple Store, right? The Apple Store is this place that provides smartphones. And so you're going to go there. You're going to ask for a smartphone. They'll provide you with an iPhone. You're going to use it to watch cat videos on YouTube. Easy enough. How does this look in Angular? Well, in Angular, we have components. Components need dependencies to do stuff, just like you needed that iPhone. In order to get those dependencies, the component reaches out to this object called an injector. An injector provides services. So when the component asks for a particular service, if the injector has it, it's going to give it to that component. This is the injection part of uh, dependency injection. So you try to inject the dependency, the injector finds the thing you're looking for, it injects it back into the component. Now that we have that dependency, the component can use it to perform some work, to do some tasks. This is not the full picture though. In Angular, we actually have more than just one injector. There's multiple injectors in an application and it can get quite confusing because we never make these injectors ourselves. It's, these are not explicitly created by Angular users. They're created by the framework, but the way the framework creates them is that it derives their structure from your application. So here's an example application here. And uh, let's focus on these, uh, these components and directives first. So these components and directives uh, form the elements on your page, right? There's gonna be a corresponding element that renders for each of these on your actual application. And so this is the first structure that Angular uses to construct what we call an injector hierarchy. So every single one of our components and directives ended up getting one of these element injectors. Now you'll notice all of the arrows in this graph are pointing up, and that's for a very specific reason. Consider the case where if we try to inject something in landing component that this element injector does not provide, well then that injection is gonna fail, right? Because the injector for our landing component right here will not have the thing that we're looking for. But we don't want to give up right there. Um, we want to support the behavior of providing our dependencies uh, near the top of our application so that everything below it can use those dependencies. So what Angular does is if this injector fails, it climbs this connection here to the next parent injector. And then it tries to find that dependency in that injector. If it can't find it there as well, it continues to climb and it'll keep doing this until it resolves its dependency. Now, if we hit the top of this element injector hierarchy and we still don't have our dependency, what happens? Well, to answer that, we need to look at the next type of hierarchy. So this one is created from our environments in Angular. That's these three partitions right here. And in this application, we have these three partitions. Uh, and the reason we have them is the root partition here, this environment, the root environment, this one we always get. When we bootstrap an application, we always get this one. Our home and our dashboard environments here, these only exist because we're doing some router level lazy loading. Um, so these are created when we go to the home route or the dashboard route, these are the environments that get pulled in. And so uh, we have these three environments and this is the structure Angular uses to construct what we call the environment injector hierarchy. These behave in exactly the same way as the previous injector hierarchy. And just like those injectors, these can also be configured with different services. Uh, Angular as a framework will also introduce two of its own injectors into this hierarchy, the platform and the null injector. The platform injector is kind of this glue injector that kind of ties the diff different root injectors on your web page together. So for example, if you have multiple Angular apps on one page, each of them has their own root environment injector. And so they all need to point to some common parent, which is the platform injector. The null injector is like our terminating state 
for our resolution algorithm. So if we climb up this entire hierarchy and we can't find what we're looking for, the null injector is the last stop and it says, nope, I'm not giving you anything. I'm just going to throw an error. This is the commonly known null injector error in Angular. The only time this does not happen is if um, you try to inject something with the optional flag. Uh, if you do optional and it's not found anywhere in your hierarchy, you're just going to get null back. So we have these two hierarchies here, this element hierarchy and this environment hierarchy. How do they connect? Well, we mentioned earlier, what happens if this hierarchy here fails to service my request? It doesn't find the dependency I'm looking for. I've climbed all the way to the top from landing component to app component, and I still don't have what I'm looking for. Well, what Angular does from there is it'll return to the starting injector. It'll return to where we began our, our lookup. So we started here in the landing component. And in the landing component here, it checks to see what environment am I in? So you, you'll recall from the previous diagram, the landing component was brought in into the home environment, right? That was the environment that created this home environment injector. And so the next injector we check in this resolution path, the place where we jump off into the next hierarchy is the home environment. So then we start checking into here and then we follow the same logic. If this doesn't have what we need, we continue to climb up the tree. And if this doesn't have what we need, we go all the way up until the null injector, in which case we, we get an error back. And so this is how the resolution uh, algorithm looks like in Angular apps. Whenever you uh, use the inject function or you do constructor injection in components or services, this is what happens. This resolution algorithm climbs up this hierarchy and then it jumps off into the next one and it tries to resolve your dependency. Now, this can get a little confusing because, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we don't create any of these ourselves. And if you don't know the structure of a, a code base ahead of time, it can be hard to reason about the structure of these two hierarchies, right? Because they're derived from your Angular app. And so we know this, we've, we've done surveys on it. We know debugging dependency injection is very, very difficult. And so we want to take some steps now to make this story a little bit better. And the way that we've achieved this is with some new tooling that we've introduced into Angular DevTools. Let's look at those cool new features in DevTools now. So if I click on a component in my component explorer, I'll see this new section called injected services. This will tell me all of the dependencies that have now been injected into my component. And if I click on them, I can actually take it a step further. I can see the resolution path that was taken to resolve this dependency for this component. So this leftmost injector here, the root, injector this is the injector that actually had to do service to do service was somewhere inside this root injector um, and if i look at the beginning of this path if i zoom all the way out and then zoom into the beginning i'll see the element injector that we started at so we remember we start at the element injector associated with our component right here the app to do's component there's the element injector and we can see all of the injectors on the path that our resolution algorithm took to try to resolve this dependency for to-do service. Eventually, it hit the root injector, which is where this was provided, and that's how we got the service into our uh, component. So this can be really useful, in, especially in those cases where you, know, you have a huge application and you're trying to find where a dependency comes from. And so what you would do is, you, know, you would look for instances of to-do service within your source code, right? You do shift command F or whatever hockey you have to try to look through your source code to look for the, this literal string to do service. And maybe in some cases that's not too bad, right? If it's only provided in one place, then you'll find it very easily. But sometimes you have services provided in multiple places, multiple locations, and you're not sure which of those places that it was provided is the thing that is servicing your component. It's very hard to tell at first glance. Now DevTools does that for you. It is able to just inspect your application and figure out where these services actually came from and visualize that for you in a nice way uh, through this view. The next feature we're going to look at is the injector tree tab. Now this is a tab that lets you visualize the injector hierarchies in your application. 
So you can actually click on an injector here and see what is provided to this injector. Which tokens can this, can this injector resolve? And you can even ask the injector to resolve these tokens for you in real time. For example, I can get the, the router from this injector. Here is an instance of the router. I can even get that to do service from before. It'll log it to my console if I click this button here. You'll notice the element injector hierarchy can get pretty large, especially for larger apps. And so to make this easier, we've actually integrated it with the inspect element functionality so that when you're inspecting elements on your page, you can actually use this to traverse the element uh, injector hierarchy as well. Uh, previously, this was for the component and directive explorer only, but now it works for both. You can use it for this use case as well. So if I select the to-dos component here, you'll notice that the to-dos component is selected. And also, we've highlighted the path from that injector, the to-dos component element injector, all the way to the root of this hierarchy. So this is highlighting the resolution path that we talked about earlier basically saying that if you start at this injector, these are all the nodes you pass through to resolve dependencies. And we also highlight the nodes you would pass through in the environment hierarchy as well. Remember, these are connected. So if I'm in the element hierarchy and I can't find something, at some point I jump off into the environment hierarchy. And the place that that happens is determined by my starting element. So here, because I'm starting in my to-dos component, I'm actually starting at the very uh, beginning of the environment hierarchy, right at the bottom. But if I was to select the to do app component element injector, you'll see that I actually jump off at a different place now. The path is still pretty similar to what it was before in the element hierarchy, but I no longer actually visit this injector to try to resolve my dependency. It all depends on the starting injector and you can select that starting injector by actually clicking on these. So demo app component here also will jump off at a different location. This can be very useful to reason about the structure of your injectors in an application, especially if you don't really have too much information about your either your render or component tree or the different environments in your application. If it's a new code base, it's very hard to know those right off the bat. But with this, you can just visualize them in a nice, neat way without having to worry about it too much. You can see what's provided where, and you can even see what different injectors have for different values. So super cool new feature. I'm really excited to actually see how this one evolves as well. I see a lot of potential here for uh, making even more things easier. And I'm very excited to see what people think about it. So upgrade to Angular v17 and, and try these out. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to this.media for having me on. If you have any suggestions on how to improve any of these features, you can reach out to us via the GitHub issues on the Angular repo. I'm really excited to see you there. And once again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. This program is presented by this.labs, the framework agnostic consulting firm helping enterprises realize their technical goals through staff augmentation, consulting, project management, on-demand subject experts, training, and other professional services. Find out more at this.labs.com.